So what is up guys? This is Nick here from Everything Tech and welcome to this Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore full in-depth review. You can see right here, this is the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore. Now this is an exclusive phone for AT&T that is only sold through Walmart. Now you can also get this phone. It's a renamed phone. It's called the Hi Kyo Sierra Hydro Reach, I believe. Subscribers pointed to me out this in the comment section and I confirm this for Boost Mobile. This is the same exact device here. But let's get into this full review. You know how it goes around here. What you can do is go ahead and go to the timestamp down below and go to the sections that matter most to you. Or if you want to have the full in-depth knowledge of this device, you can go ahead and watch the whole review and you can get out of here knowing my experience, some knowledge about it, and if you want to pick this device up. So if you want to see that on the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore, stay tuned. Let's go. All right, guys, so kicking this video off, we're going to begin with the hardware tour of the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore here. So on the front of the device, you do have yourself, you know, a five inch display here. This is Q with a small Q that's quarter HD or below 720p. So this is not even an HD phone. And it shows here, as you can see, not the sharpest text I've ever seen. And the display itself, we'll talk about that in a little bit but it's not the best I've ever seen. So anyway, that's that. We got a five inch small Q HD, not quad HD. At the top of the device, we do have a two megapixel front facing camera here, and we do have an earpiece here along with the Kyo Sierra branding right there. Going off to the right, we do have the power button here on the device. And going off to the bottom of the device, we do have our micro USB port. And right here is a little slot that you can go ahead and pop this guy off with if you're interested in doing that. Over here is a mic. On the back of the device, there's a nice grippy texture, very grippy, probably the grippiest phone I've held all year, believe it or not. It's one of, the, it's really grippy. It's just one of those grippy feels. So right here we have a speaker grill, a five megapixel camera and an LED flash right there. Up at the top of the device, we do have the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Always nice to see one of those, you know. And then we have a volume rocker switch right here. And going around the sides, it's just kind of a durable plastic, you know, right there along the side. So this is nothing a premium design. This is not a very, I would say, attractive design to many people. This is probably just going to be more of a functional, you know, sturdy device for those of you who need some waterproofing because it does include that waterproofing. And we're going to test that later in this review. And um, yeah, but let's get into now the build quality of the device. I'm going to talk about my experiences with uh, how the build quality has been with the Hi Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore. All right guys, in terms of the build quality, it's been, you know, it feels pretty strong. This is a phone that I felt like I didn't have to put a case on. So, you know, if you're getting this phone, you don't need a case for this phone. It's really grippy and it's, it feels like it could take a beating. It's one of those phones you can just throw down and it could definitely take a beating here with the Kaya Sierra Hydro Shore here for the AT&T Go phone. And I kind of like that because, you know, using all these premium devices a lot, you know, it's nice to have a phone that you can just throw on the side and, you know, with whatever you're doing, you don't care if you drop it, you know. I dropped the LG G4 in Starbucks the other day and nicked the corner and I was like, oh no. But with this guy, if I would have dropped it, I probably wouldn't have cared at all. But you know what? This is one of those devices like that. I couldn't confirm if this was Gorilla Glass on there. I didn't see any, you know, sources saying that. But overall, the glass, you know, it, it got pretty smudgy, you know, as you can see in this video. It does get pretty smudgy pretty quickly. But, you know, I didn't, I had it with some keys and I didn't feel like it, you know, it was going to scratch up or anything like that. And I don't see any scratches on it so far. So whatever they did, it's pretty durable screen as well. It's not a very smooth screen though. It feels like one of those cheaper plastic screens, as you can see right here, like one of those cheaper plastic screens. But overall, yeah, the build quality, you're going to be kind of happy with the build quality. If you're somebody who goes out a lot and active a lot, which I'm sure this phone is going to be for people like that, you know, this... This phone was pretty decent in terms of that aspect. So yeah, that's the build quality. Now let's get into the display of the device. And I want to mention that this is, you know, a Kyo C or Hydro Reach for Boost Mobile. Uh, some subscribers pointed that out and I do thank you for saying that because I didn't know that myself. I had to go ahead and confirm it. And this is, you know, a rebranded model of that one. So if you're on Boost Mobile, this review can help you out as well. But now let's get into the display section of this review. All right, guys, talking about the display of this device, this is a QHD as in, you know, quarter HD, which means that this is not 720p. This is like 960 by 540. 
So this is very similar to Android displays we would have had, you know, in 2010, 2009. Like this is really old school in terms of the quality of resolution you're gonna get here. But you know what, I'm not gonna nitpick it because you know, this device is meant, I believe, for people who, this phone is only 80 bucks, and this is meant for people who don't wanna spend a lot of money, they just want a functional phone that's waterproof and durable. This, I don't think this is meant for somebody who's a heavy user. I believe this was meant for somebody who, you know, as somebody pointed out, like a fisherman or somebody who's gonna go, you know, you know, just go out in the beach or whatever, and they just don't, they're not looking at their phone all the time. They need it for a call and a text here and there. And you know, if they go ahead and drop it, they're okay with that. If they dunk it in water, they're okay with that. So I don't think that it was necessary to, for Kaya Sierra to go ahead and throw an HD display on here. You know, it would have been nice, but do we absolutely need it for what this device is going to serve? Probably not. But if you want me to just tell you in terms of the display quality itself, I am coming from the perspective of looking at quad HD devices and 720p devices and I could tell you if you're looking for a crispy display you're just not going to get it here so if we go to the angles here you can see it does wash out quite a bit you're just going on the angles there washes out quite a bit it is quite reflective you can see the light that I have in the background pointing on the display and it also doesn't get very bright here um, it does tend to err on the warm side so if you like warm displays it does tend to err on the warm side if you go outside a lot, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to read this device outside, so you might wanna do one of these moves right here. But overall, it's pretty decent nonetheless. Decent display, nothing that's gonna blow your pants off, but overall, it is definitely gonna be functional for the device purposes that this device, I believe, will serve. So let's get into the software now of the Kaio Sierra Hydro Shore. All right, guys, taking a quick second to talk about software. This does run Kaio Sierra's you know, skin on top of Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. I confirmed that in an unboxing video. If you haven't seen the unboxing video, go ahead and go down into the, you know, description area up here on the card. I'll leave it, the unboxing video for this device. We can see Lollipop right there, 5.1. And this does run atop, you know, or below Kyocera's skin here. So you can see they do have a skin. And in my personal opinion, it's not the prettiest skin I've seen. It's actually quite ugly if you ask me but that's just my opinion it's not it's not a fact you know if i say the skin's ugly that's just me talking that's not you know what you think you know you might say that's fine for me i like it and that's cool too i understand that as well but just from my point of view i think they it seems like a rushed os like they didn't really take time to even think about they're like okay we got some colors some squares and just make it you know look decent they, like they didn't put a lot of money into research and development on how to make a clean software here but anyway you could see it does have all your functions necessary and um but one thing i will say about the software it's easy you know like it's easy to you know color code and you could it's pretty easy to understand here because each thing has different colors with big bold text here and you can see usage manager you have battery connectivity apps lock screen security accounts language input date and time and you know, pretty much basic stuff here with a little bit of skinning going on, like I say. In the swipe down, you know, tray up here, you can see that you do have some options to toggle on Wi-Fi, location, sound, rotation, brightness, eco mode, airplane mode, Bluetooth, hotspot, flashlight, interruptions, and usage manager there. You do have some AT&T bloatware, and I'm sure you have some Boost Mobile bloatware if you get the Boost Mobile version. But yeah, you get the skinned music player here, so just a list you get a little weather app here from Kyocera. it doesn't look anything fancy here but you know what once again it's still gonna work just fine for those times that you just want to go out into the beach here i didn't even set up it yet but you can see a little weather app there and um you got the calendar here so the calendar is a little bit different there let's see what else we got this Kyocera branded here let's see the clock so the clock's a little bit different there you can see a little bit of a different design than we're used to from other devices no stock Android here. If we go on to messages, you can see pretty much there. You do get the Android Google keyboard here. I'm not sure if I said that, but I believe that's what comes with it, the Android stock keyboard. And uh, going over here in the calculator, you could see pretty much a stock version of the calculator. Let's scroll into the camera. We'll talk more about the camera in a little bit. It gives you a thousand and one, you know, things to read here, a whole book on how to use the camera, as if we don't know how to use the camera by now. But let's go over here and uh, turn it around. Let's turn it around there. 
So you can shoot in full HD, it, it shows, but we're gonna talk about the camera in the separate camera section of this review here. But yeah, that was what the camera looks. Let's go check out something else here in the software. Check out the gallery. And you can see that's pretty much how the gallery looks there. Let's go ahead and check out something else. Is that all this pretty much got the notepad here? So you get this grid, you know, thing of notepads. And then if you type a notepad like, hey, let me just put, hey, 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 how are you? That's how it looks. It's in a list. You can go ahead and change the colors of it here. You know, that's about it. You could pretty much change the colors of it. It looks like a piece of grid paper for math class or something. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the software. You get your own browser here. A pretty old school looking browser up there. It looks like the old KitKat days, if you look right there at the top. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the software on the Kyos. And look, I was looking at the reach there for Boost Mobile to see if it was the same device, which it is. So that's pretty much the browser there, you know, on the Kyos Sierra Hydro Shore slash reach. Uh, pretty, I mean, the software looks outdated. It doesn't look like, you know, something from the modern age. That's just the truth there. But overall software, how does it perform? It performs okay. There is some glitch here and there. But I did notice one thing. And Kyocera knows this is a slow device because I went into developer options before it was enabled. I enabled developer options and they had it set like this out of the box, animations off, off, and 0.5. So they knew that this device automatically was gonna feel slow to users. So what they did is before you can get into developer options, they went ahead and disabled animations altogether for you because they knew that this wasn't a very powerful device. So uh, yeah, a little tricky there from Kyocera, but you know what? I would have did it anyway if I was using this device. And now, speaking of that performance, let's get into the performance section of the Kyocera Hydro Shore here. All right, guys, speaking of performance on the Kyocera Hydro Shore here, if we go into CPU-Z, I believe I downloaded that application. If we go into CPU-Z here, you can see that this does run a Cortex A7 one point, clocked at 1.09 gigahertz. That's a quad-core CPU. That's a Snapdragon 210, actually. I confirm that that's a CPU. It's a Snapdragon... 210 here in the Kyocera Hydro Shore. It does have, it is clocked at 1.09 gigahertz, so that's a very low clock speed. I mean, that's pretty much what you can expect at these lower budget, super budget phone, you know, clock speeds. But, you know, something like the Moto E and, you know, other devices around this price, some blue devices, they do give you better specifications for this price. So, you know, this is 80 bucks. I mean, it's cheap, but it's not incredibly cheap. I mean, 80 bucks is 80 bucks here. So you can see that we do have one gigabyte of RAM and everybody knows that and also only available storage is 3.9 gigabytes. So you know when you have low storage combined with, you know, <laughs> low RAM, that makes for a pretty not very fast experience. And I got to tell you, that is one thing I noticed. Um, just navigating the general UI, it's, if it was fine, you know, it didn't impress me because the screen, see... A phone is a sum of its all its parts, you know, so like a flagship phone has a, an oleophobic coating and a very responsive touchscreen that mixes in with high performance, which gives it the illusion and perception of, of being faster than it might really be. But when you put a lower quality panel on here, combined with a less than, you know, buttery smooth display, the device tends to give off the illusion or perception that this is not the fastest device I've used. And that's what I felt about the Kyocera hydro shore is it functional yes it's functional i mean it's it's not going to glitch up hardly ever just doing this like swiping through and stuff but it doesn't it, also to your finger your finger itself it doesn't feel like uh it feels its price it feels like a very cheap device now on the positive side you know i did like that it was waterproof and um i did like that i was able to do basically what i needed to do without you know having too much of a headache here so you could see but I didn't really load up too much stuff. I could imagine if you load up a bunch of stuff, this is gonna start to get you know, a little bit slow here, but you can see, I'm on my Wi-Fi network, you can see how long the Play Store takes to load up. So we're waiting, we're waiting. And so stuff like this happened to me. So I think this phone is gonna be 50-50. It's gonna give you some headaches here and there, but at the same time, if like I say, if you're just using this to go fishing, you're going to the beach, you want to take this in the shower or something or you're going to you know whatever you're going to do to get the phone wet it's just a backup emergency phone to get that wet it'll work fine to make a call and a text here and there but don't expect to run the greatest and latest you know need for speed and asphalt 8 and all those great games that are for android without you know noticing a little bit of a 
performance hiccup here. I mean, it is one gigabyte of RAM after all, and we know what one gigabyte of RAM does on Android devices. It makes them slower than what we need. So at the top, I noticed that this device did get a little bit hot over here. I wouldn't say overheating, but it did get hot up here. So if you use this device extensively, it does warm up and heats up pretty quickly. So in terms of that, it's not, you know, the most comfortable phone to use for long periods of times because it does heat up. So I would imagine if you're on a call for a long time, you might want to use a Bluetooth headset or some headphones like the Apple earbuds or Samsung earbuds or, you know, whatever earbuds that have a mic built in, JVC, who knows, whatever you got, try to stick to those if you're going to be making calls. But with that being said, now let's get into the call quality section of the Kayo Sierra Hydro Shore here. All right, guys, in terms of call quality, I was actually pretty happy with the call quality of the Kayo Sierra Hydro Shore. It, far, it fared well in my testing. You know, it didn't have the highest signal strength I've ever seen on a device. Uh, Motorola being one of the best I've seen on devices, as well as I would say LG. They're pretty good with the single strength as well. But, um, you know, Kayo Sierra, it did well. You know, I never had a dropped call. I, you know, I could hear people, they could hear me. And uh, a lot of people don't talk about this in the in reviews, but we actually do use the phone quite a bit. And I'm sure a lot of people buying this phone are going to be using this feature a lot. Very simple to use big buttons up there. So you just got to go to your recent calls you can go to your favorites and you can go to, you know, dial pads. So this is very intuitive, very easy to use. Yeah, the keyboard might not be the prettiest thing. It might be a square design that we could have just took a ruler and designed ourselves. But you know what? It works, it's functional, and I was happy with the call quality. So that's the call quality on the Kayo Sierra Hydro Shore. With that being said, now let's talk about the camera of this device in the next section. All right, guys, so hopping into camera of the Kayo Sierra Hydro you know, shore, or you could say the reach. You can see that we do have this rather old school camera look. So you got these big, you know, buttons here and you got a record button, a camera button. You do have the ability to shoot, let's see right here, this little thing. You do have the ability to shoot in several sizes. So 3.6 megapixels, which is gonna give you 16.9 full HD, 1920 by 1080. And then you do have four by three, five megapixel and 3.2 megapixel. 4x3 and 3.6. I'm just going to leave it on the full HD. I believe that's for the video, however. And um, yeah, it shoots a shot in uh, 5 megapixels. So let's shoot a shot here. And this camera was rather... I know it might be sounding like I'm bashing this phone most of this review, but this camera is weak. I, I have to be honest with you. This camera is it's trash. So if you go look at right there, I mean, you can see... I don't know if I, I'm going to be able to pick this up, but you can see I have some lights beaming on this, this phone for this review. And uh, let me go ahead and flick it up there. I don't know if you could kind of see this, but if you look, uh, I don't know if you could see, let me pull the light a little bit closer here. Let's see, you see that light right there? You see that light in the reflection? I'm sure you see it right there, right there. You see it, ding, ding, ding. That's a bright fluorescent light and you know, it still picked up a dim picture. So this camera will work nonetheless. I mean, it'll take a picture you know, you could zoom in and take a picture maybe of <laughs> your fish if you're going fishing, but it's not going to be nothing I would want to even share to Facebook or Instagram. This is something that, you know, you take a picture. This is like those tablet cameras in terms of quality, like uh, the Nexus 7 and stuff like that. But you do have some modes here. Not that you'll probably need them, but you do have continuous shooting. You do have effects, scenes. You have manual mode, time lapsing and the like. Now, in terms of video, we go ahead and record video. Video is okay. I mean, it, it's a video. It'll take a video, but it does, you know, you can see the, the, the exposure does flick in and out there on the exposure. So it's a pretty dim weak camera. I don't want to talk too long about this. Do not buy this device if you want a great camera. I'm sorry to say it. I mean, I always like to be, try to be positive with these devices because I love, you know, helping people out here with, you know, their smartphone decision. But I got to be honest here with you guys. This camera is weak. You know, do not buy this phone for camera. If you need a camera, just use your separate camera. I did a camera review on the Canon SX530HS, one of the best in the biz for the price. So yeah, that's pretty much the camera. Rather weak on the back. In terms of the front camera, it's the same affair. You can go ahead and get to the camera from swiping up right here, but I accidentally just went in here. <laughs> but the front camera is two megapixels and it's pretty weak as well. You can see, don't, don't be fooled in this video. You're seeing like a decent picture because you're seeing it through the lens of a camera 
and there's a lot of light on me right now, but I could tell you the detail suffers there. You can see, look at the noise. I'm pretty sure you can see the noise there, but you can see the noise in the picture. You're not going to be very happy with the quality of this camera. But on a positive note, it's waterproof. Remember, it's waterproof and it has a camera. At least it has a camera. We can always be grateful for that. So let's go into the next section of this video, which is what I'm going to talk about is the battery life. So one of the sections of the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore that I thought was going to be one of the stronger points of this device was its battery life. So this is rocking a 2160 milliamp hour battery. I forgot to peel the back off in the, uh, the hardware tour of this video, but let me go ahead and peel the back off here really quickly here on the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore. Let me pop this off and it's an embedded battery. It's a 2160 milliamp hour battery, no USB type C, no quick charging here. And um, you know, that's not that big of a battery. That's rather, you know, mediocre in terms of an Android phone size battery. So, you know, with its optimization not being the best of the operating systems out there, but you could see 85% um, in terms of the battery life, I got through a day, but you know, if you use this phone, it, it was tending to drop rather quickly there. So. I'm going to say about three hours on screen time, you know, about three hours on screen time with this guy, leave it in your pocket. It'll last all day easily. But, uh, this is not a phone that I would, you know, think I'm going to say it's going to go two, three days. I did not experience that myself. It's a phone. You got to charge every night here. If you use it, like, you know, most people do their, on their phones all day, but if you don't use it all day, it'll last a couple of days, you know? So overall battery at a scale of one to 10, I have to give it about a seven to eight out of 10. It's not going to blow you away. Like you might expect a lot of these cheap phones blow you away in their battery department because they're lower powered. But this one, this one drained a little bit quicker than things like, you know, in this price range that I've seen before, like the Samsung galaxy express three, the, you know, Moto E, the, the more budget phones, I've seen better battery life than this Kyo Sierra hydro shore, which was kind of shame because I thought that this was going to be the best battery life. But overall, like I say, on a scale of one to 10, it's getting a seven to eight out of 10. Standby time is decent, very decent here. But uh, in terms of actually, when you start using it, it starts to drain rather quickly there. So don't expect to go two, four days on this phone like you might've expected here. So yeah, that's the battery life. Now let's get into the waterproof test of the Kyo Sierra hydro shore. All right, guys, so welcome to the waterproof test of the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore. Now, I do want to say, if you guys are going to be dunking into the water, make sure that all the, the seals are closed on this device here, as it's fully going to protect this device from, you know, water damage here. Now, you can see I got this big jug of water here, and I'm sure a lot of you didn't even watch the review. You probably just skipped to this section, and that's cool. I probably would have did something similar if all I wanted to see was the waterproof, but welcome to the waterproof section. Everything is snapped in and sealed in, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna duck this baby in the water. Now, let me go ahead and turn the on screen on so you can see if the screen stays on. I'm gonna make sure that this screen doesn't power off here on the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore. So you can see when I, when I turn it a different angle, it's really hard to see that screen on the viewing angles. But let's go here into settings, and let's go into display. And let's turn the screen off after 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and turn the brightness all the way up. And now this is my review phone. So if this does break, there goes my $80. But let's go ahead and see what happens right here with the Kyo Sierra Hydro Shore. So you can see it is definitely still on there, guys. Let me put the water. You could see it's definitely on there. Oh, yeah. That's definitely waterproof in there. Oh, 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 not too shabby, Kayo. Not too shabby there. I like to see stuff like that. Ah, so okay, okay. You take this into the, you take this into the pool. You drop it in there. You can play with it a little bit. Drop it in the lake. Nothing. Nope. Nothing is going to happen here to your Kayo Sierra Hydro Shore. So that test right there should have proved that this definitely is waterproof. I mean, yeah, you, you might say you didn't leave it in there long enough, whatever. I mean, most people aren't going to leave their phone in, in the water. They're going to drop it, be like, oh, crap, I dropped my phone. But it's waterproof. And they're going to pull it out and drive it, dry it off here like I'm doing right here. And you can see it's still totally functional 
once again. Let me go ahead and dry this completely off with these paper towels. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plop off the back there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to make sure that the speaker works. I'm gonna play a video or something, make sure that the speaker works. And that could be a nice test for the sound quality, which I forgot to do here. And uh, let me go ahead and get the water out of there. Let's do that, make sure all the water is off of this device here. And um, let's go ahead and pop the back off, see if any water got inside of this device, which I highly doubt it did. So, some water did get inside the back of the Kayo Sierra. It did seep in just a little bit there, but it's covered up really well. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues in terms of water damage here. So it does show some water in the back. I don't like to see that. I wish they could get to a point where, you know, they can cover it to where you don't get water in the back of the device, but you know, there was some water in the back of the device. So, you know, if you drop this really, really deep, I think it probably would die out on you. So, you know, I wouldn't take this on the deep end of the water. Like if you're in a 15 foot pool, I wouldn't drop it to the bottom and see if that works. But overall, it survived it, you know, it still boots on. And let me see if there's a little like, you know, a little sticker that says that this device is water damaged now. So yeah, they don't even have a sticker that proves that if this device is water damaged, which is cool because, you know, then that means that they're pretty confident that it is, you know, waterproof. So I don't see any sticker that says that it's water damaged here. So let me go ahead and dry that off really quickly. And now let me go ahead and play the sound to see if the Kaya Sierra Hydro Shore took it like a champ. Let's go into the YouTube. Turn the volume up. Just go play one of my videos, everything tech here. Okay, everything tech. Let's go here. Subscribe if you haven't already. Do tech videos over on these parts. So what is up guys? This is Nick here from everything. So tech. speaker is good. It's nice to hear. Five. Speaker is good it's here on the Android Kaya Sierra Hydro Air. Sure, whatever you want to call it. And it's pretty loud speaker, so in terms of the sound quality, you're going to get a pretty decent speaker phone here. Actually, it's louder than something like the iPhone SE, which is kind of shocking here for the Kayo Sierra Hydro Shore. So that was the waterproof test. I just showed that you can dunk it in water, and it's still going to survive that. Now let's get into the conclusion and who this device is for. All right, guys, I just want to say thank you if you stuck around for this full review. I know these get a little bit long here, but you know what? We got to you know, we gotta give the details here. People want to buy these devices. They want to know what it's all about. They don't want to know little, you know, five-minute videos. They want to know what it's all about here if they're going to drop their money most of the time. At least that's what I want to know. So that's why I share these longer videos. Anyway, Thank you once again for sticking around. Who is this device for, the Kayo Sierra Hydro Shore? This device, I kind of hinted it throughout this video. This is for people who are very active, don't want to spend a lot of money, want a phone they can drop, they can take in the sand, they could drop in the water at the beach. Um, some subscribers pointed out in previous videos, fishermen, you know, you're a fisherman, you drop this in the, you know, the river, you got to go grab it. Um, if there's no piranhas in there, go for it, but uh, it'll survive that. If you take it by the shower, you need to text somebody by the water, it'll survive that. You know, if you're somebody who wants a decent, cheap phone with great durability, construction worker, you don't care about, you know, all the maps, all you need is phone calls and texts, and, you know, you're around a lot of rocks and stuff that's going to, you know, needs to take a hit. Pretty durable device here, nonetheless. If you're somebody who, you know, just wants to buy a kid a very, you know, affordable Android phone, but you don't want them on all that, you know, distraction stuff because he's trying to get his schoolwork done this might be a good device for that and uh, that's pretty much it i can't really recommend this to anybody who cares about anything about their phones because they're not going to be happy with this if you if you're really into the tech game and you really like phones and stuff um you know i really love mostly all devices but this one i had a hard time loving <laughs> just because you know it, i couldn't use this device day to day because the software just seems like it's five years old I do like innovation and I do like, you know, all devices. Like I don't discriminate against any brands. Like I love all the Samsungs, the LGs, the Apples, the, you know, the 
Nexuses, the Huawei's. I love them all, but when you, this device seems like they didn't really care. They just kind of put it together and they're trying to sell something. So in that aspect, you know, I do like devices where there's attention to detail paid. And I think Kyocera just plopped this one together, threw some waterproof in, and they're trying to uh, sell this device, make some money off of it. Hopefully they can, you know, sell you on the waterproof. Now, if you don't need the waterproof, stay away from this device. If you do, go for this device. If you know, if you're any of those people I just said who it's for, then it's going to be a great device for you. But um, as somebody who uses um, many tech, if you really want a water resistance device, you'd be uh, better off looking for something else like maybe the Galaxy S5 in, in the budget range. You can get an S5 that can take some water drops like that as well. Um, and that device has a five inch full HD display. I did S5 coverage. You can go ahead and check out, is my S5 Galaxy S5 still worth it here in 2016? I'll leave that in the link down below as well as in a card up above here. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. I don't want to be a negative Nancy here, but I just got to lay down the truth for you. And uh, sometimes if the truth is shit, if the phone's shit, then the phone is shit. And this phone, while it's not shit, it works. In my opinion, this is a pass right here. I would not buy this phone right here. Probably, I would probably buy it if it was like, you know, 40 bucks, but 80 bucks? No, this phone needs to drop a little bit before they start, you know, selling some of these. Now, the one on Boost for $60 might be decent, but still, I mean, why spend any money on, the, on a device that has, you know, weak specs, one gigabyte of RAM, a really outdated UI. It looks like it's from 2009 and just... You know, yeah, it has lollipop, but it just feels very outdated and a screen that is going to disappoint and every day you're going to be wishing you bought something else. And that's pretty much going to wrap this review up. Anyways, have a great day wherever you are. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't for more technology videos like this. Have a great day and be sure to be well. Comment down below any thoughts, questions, concerns, you know, opinions, whatever. Just engage with us so we can kind of, you know, talk about this device if interested. And uh, yeah, be sure to be well and peace.